Well, sometimes you buy something, you've got to take it apart before you even use it. And uh, this is a steel bicycle style uh, brush saw, but it's a larger battery powered one called FS1, FSA 135. And I bought it to uh, be able to retire a similar brush saw, also from steel. And I just couldn't resist opening it up to see what the motor was and how it was all done. And uh, as is often the case with steel products, I'm pretty impressed with the build quality and the engineering. And I'm uh, really impressed with how small the motor is. If you look at the case halves, you can see that the vast majority of the space is actually allocated to battery, whereas the motor takes about that much space and the motor fits inside this housing, which is both the mount to the shaft end, the square drive, uh, solid drive shaft, the straight shaft, straight uh, solid drive shaft, square recess output on the motor. The motor is a little uh, brushless outrunner. The magnet wire is substantial. I couldn't find a caliper out here to measure it, but I don't know. I'd eyeball it as being more than a millimeter in diameter and uh, paired. And you can see the, the magnets on the external rotor grouped in threes. And somewhere on here, probably won't show up in the video, but there's a maker's mark, or maker's, uh, seems to be made by Domel. I'm sure it's made specifically for steel, or some, it's an OEM version, but looks like a Domel 4888, the first number I can make out. If I can uh, <coughs> read more of them, I will put them in the comments. But uh, yeah, pretty decent amount of battery wire. The two wire connector here runs down to that blue dab. I'm guessing it's a temp sensor. Don't seem to be any halls. This is not a precision speed device, so they're surely just running it sensorless. And uh, yeah, the big demand on this is going to be current through the, uh, through the phase windings. So here we have substantial phase wires, fair bit of heat sinking on the speed controller on the motor controller and then all of that gets cooled by significant amounts of airflow. This uh, fan sits on the back of the motor. It's actually a hardwareless mounting. They've just molded the, that kind of triangular shape fit here and then there's a this is an e-clip or a circlip that holds it on and so it covers up a good chunk of the, uh, the back end and forces the air to be flung out from the tail end after passing through the armature and uh, across the stator wires and flung out by the rotor and it gets ducted uh, out and down so intake is all from this face and that fits in the case such that it can be drawn and it draws the air up through this mesh filter that's easily removable for cleaning. So on the bottom of the case, I think the, me the mesh filter sits at the front and then it gets drawn up into the motor or into the motor here and then expelled, flung out through this kind of horn shape and out the, that must go like this. No, that's the top of the case. Uh, it goes out the bottom but it only goes out one side of the bottom. Something like that. So yeah, it comes out there on the bottom of the case. So yeah, it's got the provision for a lot of airflow, as long as you keep this cleanish. Um, this is for sure moving a ton of air and it's running it straight through the windings. So, and a temperature sensor right on top of one of those, uh, stator poles so yeah no reason it shouldn't take a lot of take a lot of current and uh, put up with it for a long time and this is also I think it draws air across the controller first um, 
I think that this kind of, in fact, fits like right inside the screen filter. And then the rest of it, um, you know, this is canned and potted and uh, all of the connections look really solid. Ferrite coil and looks like, I know what the yellow fence wire is back to the battery pack, something that communicates with the battery. I haven't really dug into how these uh, AP packs can still are, are wired, but uh, they probably, their BMS must be inside them. So the, uh, maybe it's it, probably it's a battery temp signal because otherwise it's just got positive, negative, a duplicate positive, negative in fine gauge and then the yellow. So yellow is probably a thermistor or a thermal couple to give the, give the ESC, give the controller some feedback on, on battery temps that it could shut down if the battery got too hot. Although the battery itself would be able to shut it down. So who knows, probably just redundancy. And then heading forward to the controls, they're just these two nice waterproof connectors. Once they're installed in the case, they line up perfectly and there's like perfect strain release, nice tidy cable routing and runs up to the hand grip, which is, you know, it's possible that even one of these um, moldings is the same as the, the gas saws. In the gas saw, this would be your kill switch. There's obviously no uh, LED or battery. And then you have interlock and then trigger on the, trigger on the front. And in this case, for the electric model, power on, and then it'll show you battery uh, state of charge, and then interlock and throttle. So yeah, there must be a hall throttle in there for variable speed, but uh, pretty robust, pretty well done. All in all, I'm, uh, I'm really impressed. I'm surprised at how small the motor is, but the, the wire gauge suggests that they're really able to put a lot of current through it. And yeah, it's got me excited about the prospect of uh, making one of these out of an outrunner and a scrapped John's Red brush saw that I have around here somewhere. So yeah, I looked online before buying this to see if I could learn more about the tool and I found no information. So here's uh, me trying to contribute a bit with a quick teardown video. Still FSA 135. It's, uh, it's 2024 and I'm in the Canadian market. So this is what they're selling right now. All right, hope this is useful to someone. Take care.